All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Charlie Tom Bazian, who is in Scottsdale, Arizona. How are you doing, Tom? Charlie? I'm doing great. Thank you, John. Yeah, and Charlie's currently the president of Innovative Strategies, a Scottsdale, Arizona-based management consulting firm. Okay, and we're going to talk about the true differentiation of growth. And what do you mean by the true difference, different, uh, true differentiation of growth, Charlie? Well, it takes differentiation to grow in this economy, mm -hmm. in this marketplace. And so uh, I found a unique definition of differentiation that many people do not use when they define that they are differentiated. And it is, you must go down a path far enough to where your competitors either can't follow you or won't follow you. Right. And when you are truly differentiated, you've gone down that path far enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you, so number one, obviously you need to choose the right path to go down. And, and when you say you need to go down the path further than anyone else, what, what do you mean by that? Well, let's take a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, it, this, this marketplace, I would refer to it as a sea of sameness. Everything right. sounds and looks the same. You have so many choices, so many options between the internet and the physical marketplace. And uh, there's just a lot to choose from, and a lot looks the same. In, in, that, in that regard, then, what we need to do is think about what we can do that is unique and different. Smart branders and marketers know that people pick up, their brains are wired to pick up difference faster and better than uh, sameness. And so we've all had that experience where we know that something is unusual or odd and our brains pick that up very fast. So you see a lot of smart marketing and sales campaigns uh, where the company is using some uniqueness or difference about them. Uh, and it can be quirky or odd, like the Mayhem ad for uh, mm -hmm. Allstate Insurance. Um, mm -hmm. When that ad hit the marketplace, I think people were like, wow, that's, that's weird. That's crazy. Um, who would do that? And uh, so they came up with a differentiating way of expressing who they are as a company. Um, but my, my statement is, if you don't have an operating model that backs that differentiation up with something that you do that's very different um, as part of the, your business, as part of what you do, then the marketing messages and ads are yeah. not going to be sustainable. They're just not going to be sustainable. Yeah, no, no, 100%. It's like, yeah, the innovative marketing is one thing, but you have to deliver on it. And I think today, one of the things that's coming to the fore more and more, I think, is that, as you, as you correctly say, there's a sea of sameness. Um, there's a perception that most products or services are pretty commoditized. There's not a lot of difference for them. The one area where you have a great opportunity to differentiate is in the is in the customer experience. Yes, um, you know there are three choices that companies have to make, and this was uh, well documented and studied in the late '90s and early 2000s. Um, there was a book out by uh, Michael Tracy and Fred Warzema that talked about the, uh, uh, the leaders of industries and how they are uh, unique in terms of being able to go down a path far enough. And mm -hmm. so I think that what you do is you choose which path makes the most sense for your company. Obviously, Amazon, a uh, big company, has chosen a path that is operationally excellent. That's one of mm -hmm. the three choices. You're the low cost provider. You can dominate based on your platform, your software, whatever it is that you provide. And, um, and so that, that's one of the choices. Another choice is products and services leadership. Um, you've right. decided that you wanna be state of the art. You wanna make sure that you have the front runner products and or, and or services uh, for your customers and for the marketplace. And so you choose that path. And the third path is we don't have the best products and services. We're not operationally excellent like an Amazon, but what we do have is great relationships with our customers. They're so mm -hmm. deep. They're so deep that we know things about them that our, our competitors do not know. 
And so when you pick customer intimacy or customer experience, as you said, you've chosen to go down a path farther than any of your competitors can or will, because you know you're going to leverage that knowledge of that customer. And so it takes, I mean, it takes a certain amount of fortitude, doesn't it, to continue, to go really far down a path, right? Because when you start to do that, obviously, you know, it, it's, not a, it's never a smooth process, is it? No, no, not a smooth process. There's a lot of risk involved, and so it's not for the faint-hearted. Mm -hmm. uh, you definitely want to make sure that, number one, your people are uh, really committed to the continuous improvement that it takes. Um, when you're truly differentiated, you'll do things that most others will not, especially in the customer intimacy. Great example of that. You might think this is all for big companies, but uh, there's an air conditioning firm in Mesa, Arizona here. And whenever their technicians get up on a roof to fix an air conditioner, before they come down, they clean the leaves out of the rain gutters. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. Right. Nobody in their business does that. And yet, they see it, it's right there in front of them. It takes five minutes to do, and yet they're solving such a pain point for their customers who don't wanna get up on their roofs or who don't wanna clean leaves out of their rain gutters. Mm -hmm. So that's a great example of a small company taking a big company principle and saying, we can be different. We can go down yeah. that path farther. So whatever path you decide or you choose to go down, though, the as you said, I mean, it has to be a whole company effort, right? So it has to everybody in the company has to understand that this is the road you're going down and everybody has to organize themselves to support it. So it has to be very, very well communicated throughout the organization. Absolutely. Um, I, I worked with a construction company here in Arizona who decided not only their own people uh, that work for the construction company needed to be trained and be mindful about this being the path they were going down, but they wanted to train all of their subcontractors. So if you can imagine plumbers and painters, uh, all those electricians, et cetera, going through a training that says we're going to do unique and extraordinary things for our customers. It was uh, way far down the path and most construction industries thought they were very stupid for doing that. Mm -hmm. And then, and so when, when you start a process like this, okay, you have to obviously make a choice because that's the most important thing, uh, make a choice and then obviously communicate it out to everybody. But then you have to get everybody being creative about how we, how that is brought to life, right? Because it's brought to life differently by sales than it is by customer service or by implementation or whatever. Yes, absolutely. Uh, each 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 uh, part of the organization will have unique things to play. And what I use for that is customer journey mapping. Everybody's familiar with customer journey mapping mm -hmm. today. It's kind of a staple for most businesses. And when you have a customer journey map that's end to end, it shows the steps from marketing and attracting the customer all the way through uh, the delivery of the service and follow up and anything that goes on after delivery. So um, every part of the organization can see where it has touch points with the customer and identify what are we providing today for that customer that might be unique or different. And could we go down that path a little bit farther? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so, so how do you know then when you've gone far enough or, or too far? Far enough. Well, I think you know when you've gone far enough when people say, you know, they do something for us as, as customers that nobody else does. And so you hear that in testimonies and stories that customers will tell. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing how word of mouth spreads about things that are unique, different, mm -hmm. and people pick up those stories. And so whether you're talking to consumers or you're talking in the B2B marketplace, uh, it doesn't matter, we're all human beings, our brains all pick up differences faster and better than, um, than, you, than sameness. And so uh, it, the same rule applies. Mm -hmm. And obviously then there's a flip side of that, uh, that people will pick up, uh, as you say, differences more than sameness. So if you drop the ball uh, and you don't deliver on, on what, your, what your promise is, then um, that too stands out. Yes, absolutely. So a uh, good example of that is Homey, the real estate company out of Salt Lake. Um, they're doing a lot that most real estate companies don't do. First of all, 
They have a mortgage company inside their company. They have a title company inside their company. They're mm -hmm. using salaried, salaried real estate agents. And so they're way down that path. But anytime a new entry comes into the marketplace, they have to look at what that competitor is offering and say, are we still differentiated? Are we still able to truly separate ourselves from these new competitors in the marketplace? And so you have Zillow, you have uh, Realtor.com, all of those companies disrupting the real estate market and putting some real estate agents out of business. And uh, you got to keep it up. You got to keep innovating. You got to keep moving down that path. Yeah, because that's a good point, because uh, you may have done a lot of work and said, OK, this is our differentiation and gone really far down the path and whatever. But it's not a one time thing, uh, because, as you say, that suddenly your differentiation can become something that nobody cares about or something that actually isn't that different or other people do better. Yes, absolutely. Um, when I was at Avnet uh, several years ago, um, we were known by our customers for being the great relationship people. It was more of a partnership to our customers than it was a vendor relationship as a distributor of computer technology. And uh, we heard that over and over from our customers. You guys are friendlier, you're more flexible, you're better to deal with than your top competitor. But your top competitor is operationally excellent. They deliver on time, they deliver on budget, et cetera. And sometimes you guys don't. We're willing to give you a second chance, but don't ask us to give you a third chance if you mess up. So you got to have a good threshold value in the other two paths that you need to take. You need to be in the game. You can't be lousy at operational excellence and right. you can't be lousy at um, product and service. But you're going to go down one path farther. That's where your majority of your resources are allocated and continue to provide that threshold value uh, in the other two, in the other two paths. And so, are there any? Uh, have you seen any examples when people have attempted to do all three? Uh, yes, and they end up being mediocre <laughs> 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 because you never have enough resources to truly go down the path far enough. You know, yeah. it's 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 not easy. And I said, as I said, it's it's not for the faint of heart. There's risk involved, and um, but the companies that take that risk are the ones who tend to succeed in their industries. So what's it? Uh, I mean, when you when you talk and work with companies, what's the process of of deciding which one, which which area to place your bet on? It's a it's a strategy process and it's a customer uh, process. So first of all, internally, what do you think your strengths and weaknesses are? What do you think the gifts are that your people and your company bring to the marketplace that you can leverage? And if it is. Uh, about relationships, then customer intimacy is probably that path. But before you do that, you want to go out and validate in the marketplace through your customers and, and potential customers that they see you that way. If they don't mm -hmm. see you that way now, you got a long road to, you know, long road, uphill road to go there because they don't even have that sense of you yet. So for those companies who feel like they've got uh, a differentiator today. They may not have gone down the path far enough yet, but they still feel that they have something that's different or unique. And CEOs all the time will say, oh yeah, we got better people or we got this or we got that. But most of the time that doesn't materialize into delivering great value for the company, uh, yeah. for their customers. So I think that it's very important that you think about um, what is it that can make us unique? How good are we at that today? And what can mm -hmm. we do in addition to what we're doing? Uh, it takes creativity, it takes innovation, and a good culture to support it. Yeah, so you have to have some kind of baseline, right? And you have to have some capability. Otherwise, I mean, you can't choose something that you're not going to be able to deliver on. No make a lot of sense but i've, I've then, seen that mistake <laughs> yeah no i'm sure you have that's why i've mentioned it i'm sure you have uh and so and so today uh i mean as you said i mean there is a sea of sameness there are so many people out there uh, new products and services are coming online the whole time when this current crisis is over we'll probably see a whole new wave of of innovation and that uh, coming so um so what is, as consumers, whether as B2B consumers or as B2C consumers, what is it did you think that grab that will grab us in the future because, you know, we're becoming so kind of numb to all of this stuff? 
So I, I just saw a great presentation by a firm here in Phoenix uh, a couple of days ago called The Future of Marketing. And basically what they talked about is what's going to come out of this COVID-19 uh, era, so to speak, is that people are now seeing each other in a more humanistic way. Mm -hmm. They're seeing the whole person, right? We're having a Zoom meeting right now and you're, you're seeing my, yeah. my, uh, my office and you're seeing what pictures are hanging on the wall. And in some cases, when you do Zoom meetings, you're seeing how people are dressed and the fact that they got a dog running around. <laughs> everything, everything is becoming more human. As you walk through your neighborhood, people are paying more attention to who you are and smiling. And there's just a lot of friendliness that's going on. And so uh, I think that what marketers are looking at here are, say, are saying, what, what is it that will be different and unique in the future? And we've been on a path for a while about authenticity. We've been on a path mm -hmm. about being, being more human and appealing to that humanness that we have. But I think marketing is going to get even more so. And so uh, those companies that are not human in their, in their orientation, not human, um, I think they'll have more trouble going forward based upon what's happened in the market today. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think 100 percent. And especially as people kind of come out of this, I think uh, one of the things with, you know, with the isolation and all of that is I think there is there'll be a growing hunger for that. But as you rightly say, that was already happening. I think that people were were really hungering for, for the for the human connection. And unfortunately, a lot of people have gone down the road of using technology as a barrier rather than as, a, as an enabler, using it as a barrier, putting layers between, you know, the human and the other human. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, that, that will go away a lot. I don't think you'll be able to get away with that. Yeah, and I, I think closely related to that is this notion of, are we making a difference in our community and in the world? You know, mm -hmm. are we making the world a better place because of what we do? Not every company thinks that they have an opportunity to do that. But when you're creative and you think about it and you ask your employees, what, what would drive you in terms of a purpose for our business? What would be exciting and compelling? And I'll tell you, when Larry Fink, the uh, CEO of BlackRock, uh, mm -hmm. says to all the portfolio companies that they've invested in, if you don't have a social purpose for your business, I don't want you in my portfolio any longer. And so those CEOs were shocked by his statement that he wants to see that each of those companies that they invest in is connected to doing better for the world, not just for customers, not just for themselves, but for the world. So yeah. I think that's powerful. And it's part of that human thing that we all long for companies that are wanting to make a difference in a better way. Yeah, and I think that's fantastic. That's a great way to to round out the conversation, Charlie. So uh, all of Charlie's information will be in his contributor bio uh, along with this uh, video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so um, I worked at uh, a couple of big companies, one one good sized company, Avnet, as I mentioned before, for nine years and uh, was an executive there responsible for the voice to the customer office and for global strategy for half of Avnet's business, which at the time was about eight billion. Um, I've had small company experiences and mid sized company experiences and consulted uh, since 2009. And uh, it, it's primarily a three-legged stool. It's helping people with differentiating strategies. It's helping people with customer experience as one of those potential strategies. And it's helping people with their leadership and their culture that supports all that. So I'll go in. They may want me to come in and do leadership development or training, but oftentimes my longer-term relationships uh, blend into the use of strategy and strategic planning and uh, uh, developing a better customer experience. Excellent. Well, listen, uh, Charlie, this has been a fascinating conversation and I think a, a very timely one because I do think uh, people are going to have to relook at everything about their businesses coming out of this and certainly, you know, differentiation is, is it's the toughest one really in many ways and I think that's why it's a good time to, to look at it. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah.